Dinner and a Movie is brought to you by Hamilton Walkers. Chicago filmmaker Gabe Polsky's new film, Red Penguins, releases this week. It's a story of capitalism gone haywire as the U.S. and Russia teamed up in the 1990s to save the Russian hockey program. Film critic Pam Pal and Gabe Polsky talk about Red Penguins. Check it out. Gabe, thank you so much for joining us on WCIA TV's CI Living to discuss your new film, Red Penguins. I really appreciate you joining us. Thanks a lot, Pam. It's good to be here. I'm, I'm glad that you're able to. Um, you know, after creating your other hockey movie, Red Army, had you heard of this story about the Pittsburgh Penguins joining forces with the Red Russian or the Russian Red Army hockey team? Had you heard of that before? No, I'd never, I'd never heard about it. And uh, you know, I was promoting Red Army at, at some of the major film festivals, and in New York. Uh, after one of the screenings of Red Army, this guy came up to me, he was sort of a strange guy, and he was very passionate and basically wanted me to, you know, was pitching me this story about this this same Red Army team and what happened in the 90s after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And I just uh, kind of shoot him off because I really wasn't interested in looking at, at Russian hockey again. And um, he sent me a lot of materials uh, you know, a huge box of material on, on, on this whole story that he'd been collecting for many years, 20 years. Uh, and, and I kind of looked, eventually ended up looking at it and was un amazed at this story, amazed at the, the at what had happened, the fact that e even this story was even possible, that this famous Red Army team, the, the glory of the Soviet Union, the greatest sports dynasty in history, basically went bankrupt when the Soviet Union collapsed and, and went to their enemies, the United States, to save them, the Pittsburgh Penguins. And it's just this incredibly unlikely story that was so, you know, dramatic and strange and, and what had happened, the characters in the story that I knew was something really special and sort of darkly humorous, but also kind of telling about what, what was going on in, in, in Russia in the 90s and how it led to what we see today. It's, it is a crazy, bizarre story. And I, I think it really proves that truth truly is stranger than fiction. Tell me, when you were talking with Steve and when you, who's the, the documentary subject, one of them, and then going through all of these boxes of stuff that came to your doorstep, and doing your own research too, and you've got a vast knowledge base about hockey and about the, the Russian team. Um, what was the most surprising thing to you that you found in doing all of this research or discovering it? What was the most surprising aspect? Well, I think kind of uh, the fact that you know, uh, it, at the time in the 90s, there was a lot of optimism between America and, and, and Russia, the fact that we could maybe work together, that the that the old communist system collapsed and now they're kind of going to turn into capitalists, we thought, you know, and, and, and there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of companies going in there and investing. And, uh, you know, what I kind of learned was that it wasn't just the, the Russian penguins that, that met kind of a very aggressive, dangerous outcome, but it was a, a lot of most companies that went over there saw the exact same thing that when things kind of got successful and money was people were making money that that the the criminal element you know inevitably came in and uh and tried to get a piece or basically ruin the, any venture that was possible there Right, and, and your access, uh, not just to those characters, if you will, and they truly are characters out of a storybook, but also for the um, film footage and uh, archival footage of the training from the kids in Russia back in the day. How did you have access in finding all of these newsreels and footage and found footage, as well as having access to people like Pushin, who have scared the living daylights out of me? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what makes, you know, any period documentary, uh, you know, really dynamic is, is, is your ability to find, you know, great archival material, getting uh, people, Americans in particular, into a world that they, you know, had no idea existed that, uh, you, you know, because, and, and finding footage that's very dynamic and, 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 you know, taking people into a new world, you know, and, and so, I had very 
uh, a very good uh, pr producer in Russia that basically there are people that collect a lot of odd stuff you find. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they're collectors, they're hoarders, and, and we found kind of a guy that was basically shooting handheld video at the time of, on this team. He was just some odd guy, that Russian guy that lived in Texas, for instance. And, you know, Steve, Steve had a lot of material in his attic. Uh, the main character that Steve is kind of also a little bit of a hoarder. Thank God he collected all this stuff because it really made the film, you know, unique in that, you know, anytime you go into a strange world that you've never seen before, you've never even heard of, it's always going to be kind of interesting for the viewer, you know, rather than just seeing talking heads, you know? All right. It, and it is interesting. I mean, your your story arc is absolutely incredible. You're on the edge of your seat as you're watching all of this unfold. There's one scene, though, that I would really like for my viewers to know about, and that's the scene where you, and I believe you're with your family in Russia, and you have this sense that you're being watched. Can you take us into that scene a little bit? Yeah, well, that that actually, I mean, sort of my family in Russia at that time, for those 10 days, it was, it was my crew. Okay. And I only had basically th three people there. And essentially what was happening was we interviewed a, a KGB prosecutor. You know, this guy basically was, worked for the KGB and, and dealt with all their criminal activity. And so he, it was towards the end of the shoot and, and, and uh, you know, I, I was feeling a little bit strange there in Russia at the time. The sanctions were, were at their at a very high point and there's a lot of negativity towards America and you know, politics and stuff. So anyways, it was one of the last days of the shoot and, and this KGB prosecutor basically just started talking about all this very openly about kind of the place Russia is in right now. And it was a little bit, you know, negative towards Russia. And so I was kind of surprised. He kept going, going, going. I almost couldn't interrupt him. He was talking so much. Then, then, then a, a, an overweight man showed up right behind us and was just basically listening for 10 minutes about I don't know, three or four feet behind everybody. And finally, I just like kind of looked back and I, I asked the producer, I said, what, what the hell's going on? You know, get, why is this guy standing right behind us? And so as soon as I turned back, basically five cops came out of nowhere and, and said, there's a bomb in the area and you guys got to get out of here. So the crew started running and uh, it was just very odd. And that was the end of that kind of interview. The, the producer said, Did you, do you think you've got what you need? I said, yes. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's all you're going to get, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, I saw this in Toronto last year. It was one of the, part of the festival. And timing-wise, the festival was amazing. But now with its release and the election coming up, tell me what your thoughts are about this film being released at this time. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I, I like to make films that are, you know, timeless. But but I think, um, you know, obviously this film shows how, first of all, I think that it's impossible to really be diplomatic and communicate with other countries without really knowing the history, the culture, the mentality, the psychology. I think we in America, we really know only kind of the headlines and the hacking and the you know, we don't really understand the culture, and I think we fear what we don't know. And my films, both Red Army and I think Red Penguins, give people, allow people to go inside the culture and, and understand it a little bit better, the mentality, the psychology. So that's a really important thing in, in diplomacy and kind of communication, you know? So I think the film Red Penguins also shows how Russia got to where it is today and the fact that it was dealing with so much suffering and uh, chaos in the 90s that it's, it's not surprising that they wanted, uh, you know, a very strong leader that just calls the shots, you know, and, 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 and keeps things somewhat safe, at least safer than creates order. They kind of went in the fully opposite direction again with a sort of a more di dictatorship, you know, um, but it helps people understand all of that stuff. Right. And one of the things that I love about all of your movies, including this one, is the fact that, believe it or not, this is a lot of fun. This is a funny, humorous 
take on what's happening, even though it's very poignant and relevant. Gabe, thank you so much. Can you please tell our audience how people can watch this movie beginning, I believe, on Friday, August? Actually today. Oh, today. Okay. Yeah, so the film is now available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, and, and every uh, rental and sale platform as well as every, you know, on-demand cable platform. Very good. Gabe Polsky, thank you for joining us on CI Living. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Cool. And cool is right. Coming up next, film critics Chuck and Pam are back to review two movies, one that gives a family hope and another that helps us appreciate the single life. We'll be back.